On one very peculiar day on April 22nd, 2023, RBC Discord mod and Floor 30 tryhard Sugadi thought of the brilliant idea for an event. He would ask 100 people each for an enemy and create a custom stage with those 100 enemies as a community level. The original inception of the 100 player level was much different than the final product, so let's get into what happened during the event first. The 150 player event BCU pack, or the E150 as we know today, originally was only made for 100 people. This was later expanded to 150 as more people wanted to join it. Also, if you haven't heard of it, BCU is Battle Cats Ultimate, a Java program used to simulate gameplay of the Battle Cats. You can set all the level and upgrade specifics on units and get a pretty accurate battle simulation for what it's worth, and the program allows users to create custom units, enemies, and most importantly, stages. The E150 utilized BCU's custom stage creation to easily make a content pack that featured all of these many enemies chosen by the community. How the event would work is that players would first choose an enemy of their liking, which included any enemy in the entire game. This could be a regular enemy, a boss, an event enemy, a collab enemy, or really just any non-custom enemy in the game. After that, players would have to group up to create waves in the level, which would appear after getting the base down to certain HP percentages. Each wave would also be given a name. However, this idea had quite a few flaws and was soon scrapped in favor of giving every group their own unique stage, and to just have them all be continuation stages of each other. This allowed groups to customize what they wanted their wave to be a lot more getting themselves a custom background, custom song, and more specific stage schematics when it came to using the base HP. Most importantly, it led to every wave being able to represent their theme very well. Every stage in the E150 is personalized. Magnifications were also originally locked at 100%, but this was later changed, allowing more specificity in stage design. The E150 also came with its own rule set for playing. Besides not being able to use power-ups when clearing the stages as a result of them being continuation stages, certain units were also banned. These mostly included some of the most broken ubers in the game like Dazzly, Phono, and Balrog. Some non-uber units were also banned like Ebisu, Dark Laser, and Brainwashed Legs. There was also a very special ban where you were only allowed to use either one of Cyberpunk or Sniper the Deadeye, probably in fear of preventing every stage from dying to the Cyber Deadeye meta. Later on, some of the bans were changed, unbanning some weaker ubers, and other core units became allowed. I may have gotten Can Can banned at one point, but that wasn't a very good idea considering how many stages were built around Can Can's double money so this was quickly reverted. Players playing under the E150 rule set were forced to use the same exact lineup for each set of stages, the sets being composed of five different group stages. After each five, the player would be at a checkpoint and was allowed to change half their lineup and swap out units for any other non-banned units that they have not chosen before. They were also allowed to change forms, cannons, and talent orbs. This would repeat until the player made it to the last set of stages and cleared it. Combined with the fact that after a player voted poll, Sugudi would balance the stages to be incredibly hard, doing this became an incredibly difficult task. This ended up deterring quite a lot of people from actually playing E150 in this fashion, so only a few people tried beating it under the restrictions laid here, and as of now, none have succeeded. Nearing the end of the event, a beta pack was released, which I played in the Discord VC channel while streaming it on Twitch. Unfortunately, I forgot to download the VOD, which sucks because it was generally very fun and had a lot of great moments. After the first iteration of the public release, the stages received various balance changes and custom unit skins were added, mocking vanilla units and stats but with a different animation. Here's one I created for the event, being a custom animation for an Awakened Nala clone. Pretty cool, right? Anyways, the event pretty much ended on May 23rd, 
with the Discord channels being closed and no more progress being made. I made a trailer for the event later at Sugidi's request, which was uploaded on July 2nd. But today, let's look into the stages of the E150 and just review them for fun. Now in this current version of E150, there are 5 sets and some extra stages. For the purpose of this video, I don't care about the extra stages, because they were created all entirely by Sugidi. In a similar vein, set 5 contains enemies chosen by players who didn't form groups. In such, the stages were constructed by Sugidi as well. These will not be reviewed due to, again, just being Sugidi stages. Sets 1 through 4 contain a total of 20 stages split into 4 groups, and these were all created within their own groups of people and have a unique personality. They are the stages we will be taking a look into and reviewing now. Our cast of stages includes the following. In order, we have Balls Grinder 9000, Underground Masked Ruckus, Throne of Metallica, Heaven's Last Stand, and Boomers and Zoomers for set 1. Set 2 contains Femur Breaker of the Deaths, One Last Deadly Performance, Fat Annoying Bastards, Baconator Meal, and Cybear's Volcanic Rage. Set 3 has Dance Off at the Museum Office, Gauntlet in the Stars, Salty Mole Crew, Your Refrigerator Invasion, and the M Symphony of Fiery Death. And set 4 contains Inevitable Demise, Initio and Yonko, The Faceless Mercenaries, Dying Dwarf Stars, and Tanzania Zizania. A good way to sum up these stages is a quote from Mistazine, one of the participants of the event. Although I don't remember exactly what he said in VC during the time, I can give you a rough idea. Set 1 is a good starting set. The stages are pretty balanced in quality, with some better and worse than others. Set 2 is not bad. Most of the stages are decent, but they are also outshined by one stage in the set in particular. Set 3 is full of very well designed stages, and is probably the best set overall. It can also be considered the hardest set out of the four. And set 4 is just random bullshit enemy spam. And so, without further ado, let's begin taking a deep look at and reviewing these stages. The first stage in this event is Balls Grinder 9000 by Sag and Knight. Yes, Balls Grinder 9000. This level represents the apex of humanity's accomplishments in the form of a Battle Cats custom level. To summarize this amazing level, it's W spam with six huge hermit bosses. Is it easy? Yes. This is a completely free stage that no one would ever lose on. Except this guy. You'd be lucky to make it out of this stage with both of your balls. Just look at what huge hermit could do to them. But anyways, this level basically became a meme during the event. People calling it the best level, and I think it does a good job at being a joke level in this sort of event. When it comes to representing the community in something this diverse, it's always nice to have some element of humor, and Balls Grinder 9000 is definitely a great addition because of that. Next up, we have Underground Masked Ruckus by Strawberry Elephant, Relicta, Rhombus, Monopoly, and Mug Enjoyer. The stage starts off with Manic Eraser as the boss, before spawning this collab enemy called Coco as a peon, and then spawns Mina. Yeah, you're gonna have to do another Learn to Love Rush here, and then transition into taking down Manic Eraser as other enemies support him, like Professor A and Corporal Wayland. If you take too long, the Floor 40 Menace, Mystic Mask Ulala, and another Mina will spawn. Hopefully Manic Eraser is dead, or almost dead at this point, or else your odds of winning are pretty bad. If you take even longer than that, a problematic Relic Cyclone spawns. The best way to clear this stage is to rush it down as fast as possible before other enemies spawn, which isn't too hard with the right ubers. The name here comes from a few elements. Mast comes from Mystic Masculala, Ruckus comes from the fact that these enemies when combined is rather chaotic, and as for Underground, I think that just might be arbitrary, though it could be related to Corporal Wayland. Despite the intimidating cast, the stage is actually not too bad to play, and is a pretty nice introduction to what type of non-joke stages we'll be looking at in the E150. 
The rushing nature of this stage always makes it feel intense, and although the Relic Cyclone at the end pretty much kills almost any lineup that takes too long, beating the stage before it spawns is usually viable. I'd say it's a stage I don't really have strong feelings on one way or the other, so I'll give it a pretty average score. The third stage in this set is Throne of Metallica by Just Any Dude You Know, Dark Fools, and Constack. The stage starts with a drummer doge bass, which occasionally freezes your units, followed by a metal cyclone. After that, Standem will spawn later. It is best that you take out metal cyclone first, and just deal with an almost solo Standem cleanup. The name comes from both the drummer doge being an instrument player, and the metal cyclone referring to the Metallica part, and the throne relating to Standem being a Nyandam variant, who usually sits on a throne. As a result, the song for this stage is also a metal remix of a song. I think most people agree this stage is the worst one in the event, because it isn't very interesting. It's a unit check stage for a critical hitter and nothing else. So I'll give it the lowest score of all the stages. The following stage is Heaven's Last Stand by Hungry Balgor, Chili, Gadiel, Zuggy Color, and No2. The stage starts off with Nala and Berserkori, and uh, Nala is the base. What? So to win the stage, all you have to do is kill Nala. As a result of this, she has 5 times her normal HP. Enemies will still spawn at her original position though, so you won't have to worry about scary enemies spawning right next to your base. After you deal with Berserkori, you'll have to fight Cappy Jr., and then Papu. Following these two, a few Cumulus Galluses spawn as well as a few more Zerkorids. Usually, you'll beat the stage before more than the first Gallus spawns. The name Heaven's Last Stand comes from Papu being heavenly, and Last Stand just being a generally cool sounding addition. The original name for the stage back in development was The God, The Bald, and The Bloated, referring to Nala, Cappy Jr., and Papu. But after Balgor found that he could make Nala the base, he changed it to the current name. Heaven's Last Stand is a pretty fun stage to play. There are no small peons, and it's really just a duo boss rush where you have to defeat certain big threats while dealing with Nala. Each of the main threats are beaten by doing something differently, so the stage demands a different approach for each enemy. This leads to some pretty cool gameplay, and is generally very satisfying when you beat it. It's also on the harder side of stages in this event. It's pretty easy to mess up here and die from Nala or another enemy pushing too hard. I'd call it the best stage in set 1 by a landslide. The final stage in set 1 is Boomers and Zoomers by Nspace, Hav, Gamani, and Cricket. The stage first starts off with Master Euro and Doremi, which means there is no playing this one without Awakened Bahamut. In order to stall Master Euro long enough to kill Doremi, You'll have to clip rocks through Dormi when she has a knockback stage, as well as killing the little doges that spawn. After Dormi goes down, you'll have to stall Master Ural like it's 450 while slowly chipping him down. Three Lorises also spawn over time, so you have to prepare your units to deal with them as well. The name Boomers and Zoomers comes from generation names and the enemy seen here. Being old, Master Ural and Loris are the Boomers, while Dormi and Little Doge are the Zoomers. This stage isn't too fun to play, as after the initial rush, the gameplay feels quite slow. But the main problem here is Little Doge. He can basically screw up your entire run with dodge procs, considering how volatile these enemies are. If you get multiple Little Doge dodges during the start, your run is pretty much just dead from bad RNG. Combine this with challenging rock clips you have to consistently pull off, and the chance of dying when it's not your fault is just very annoying. For a stage this coherent, I'd call it one of my least favorites. But hey, at least the theming here is very well done. We'll move on to set 2 now. The first stage in set 2 is Femur Breaker of the Depths by BTS Lover 62, Spawncon, Redbun, Waz, Jace, Sgab, and Internet Cookies. This stage comes in three major waves and is on base hit. The first wave has Raging Bahamut and Behemoth Lusa, while the second one has Puffsley's Comet and Golem Sunfage, and the last one just has Scissorax. All three waves are supported by spams of Mistress Celeboodle and a few Zappies. As for the name, 
I don't know too much about its meaning. My best guess is that the deaths part is related to Puffington and Gollum Sunfish and Scissorex being all water creatures. For the rest, my guess is that one enemy here is called the Femur Breaker by the members of the group. This stage is pretty unfun to play. The first wave is miles harder than the other two, and the Zappies combined with the two bosses make this a hard threat to deal with. It can be extremely free with certain lineups, while being annoying and difficult on others. It's about what you would expect from an enemy spam stage. Most of these weren't designed with being the best stage in mind, so this should be reasonable. Next we have the fan favorite One Last Deadly Performance by Hyon, Scope, Swordsman, Mistazine, and Chilfrey. This stage was voted as the best stage in the poll after the event finished, and was designed with multiple phases with a lot of care. It starts off with Crazed Mineko and Evil Empress being the main threats, while you deal with Ginger Snatches as the main peons. After a while, a Dabu that does only 5% of its normal damage spawns, acting as additional pressure. This Dabu more so acts as a debuffer than a damager. The last enemy spawns a bit later, with Hazuku there to act as an immediate threat that must be taken care of. The name comes from the three main threats being related to performance. Praise Monaco is an idol and performer, Dabu comes from the Parade of the Dead, and Empress come from Temptation Symphony. This also relates to the song here being an epic orchestral remix of Bad Apple. OLDP plays similar to 447, but also very differently. You've crazed Mineko interactions, but this time are looking to time supercars against Empress for damage. There's lots of timing involved in RNG with peon spawns, so being adaptable is very important. This is genuinely a very fun stage to play with practice and strategy in mind, and quickly grows on most people who play it. It's commonly referred to as the best stage, but would I agree? Personally, I'd call it one of the best stages, but my favorite stage in the event actually goes to something else. This still definitely deserves a great score, though. Following up, we have Fat Annoying Bastards by Froyo, Curious George, Spiquette, the Collector, HK5612, and Icicles. Festival Sign spawns at the start along with some Setsukos, which are these collab enemies here. On base hit, Nerfed Walpurgisnot and a Relic Bun Bun spawned, followed up by Aki and Sir Metal Seal later on, all while being supported by a lot of Setsukos. The name comes from the fact that Relic Bun Bun and Walpurgisnot are fat annoying bastards. It's as simple as that. FAB is a pretty tame stage despite what it looks like. The enemies here are at a reasonable magnification that most lineups will be able to clear these enemies fairly simply. It has a metal enemy in Sir Metal Seal, so you will need a critter to deal with them. But it's a pretty simple stage that isn't really annoying despite the name. Overall, not bad or good, I'd call this one about average. Next up we have Baconator Meal by Sawako, Berries, Hot Potato 3264, SLR 9, Sandstone, Godzilla, and Smoke. The stage starts off with Homolui and Zerul, with a Shampoo and Papau spawning a bit later. After that, Unit 13 will spawn with Dark Joe and another Shampoo. If the base goes down to 80% HP, Zero Luza, Raynard, and another Shampoo will spawn. The name of the stage comes from the fact that Zerul is bacon. Yeah. Baconator Meal is a stage where you have to rush enemies with balance. You need to remove as many of the initial threats as fast as you can while not activating the 80% base HP wave. You'd want to clean up Unit 13 first. Most lineups would have the required tools to deal with stuff in this stage, and I'd say that despite being enemy spam, you can still develop quite the strategy. That makes it more interesting than other enemy spam stages, but not really good enough for me to give it a better score. The last stage in set 2 is Cybear's Volcanic Rage by Super Seaman 5000, Lost Data, Nez, and Wafer. Manic Islands, Manic Macho Legs, and Boar Juniors all spawn periodically, while Fallen Bears spawn gradually over time. After a decent amount of time, the boss, Teacher Cybear, spawns. His attack is cut down by half so that he takes two shots to kill Rob, which actually makes quite the difference. 
The name of the stage comes from Teacher Cybear, obviously, as well as the Manic Islands. Cybear's Volcanic Rage is a pretty challenging stage with multiple ways to play. You can either rush the stage and kill the base before Cybear spawns, or you can progress through it slowly with options to kill Cybear. It's pretty simple in concept and execution, but can be challenging if unprepared. I'd give it a pretty decent score, but it's nothing too special. On to set 3 now, which is agreed to be the best in stage quality. The first stage here is Dance Off at the Museum Office by Gren, Pure Teddy, Veladu, Archer I guess, and Kobaz the Polar Bear. Everything in this stage is on base hit, so you will get max money before fighting the enemies. Once you do, Enemy Dancer Cat, Megamojo, and CTO Seal spawn as the main threats, with occasional Honey One One and Zalo support. The name mainly comes from the enemies here. Dancer is for the dance off, while the museum comes from Megamojo and Honey One One being ancient things that could be preserved in a museum. In office comes from CTO Seal being an office worker. The original name for this stage was actually Ancient Office of the Dancing Dead referring to the same things but with different words, and also including Zalo. This stage is pretty nice to play, and feels like a traditional Heavenly Tower base hit boss combo stage. You'll want to bring attackers that will deal with both Megamojo and CTO Seal, as well as enough defensive options to safely stall Dancer during the cleanup. The song here is also just pretty fun to listen to while playing, and fits the theme very well. Overall, it's just an enjoyable experience, and a rather nice stage I would say. After that, we have Gauntlet in the Stars by Sir Killalot, Zenith, Quantum123, Wawa Cat, The Dissage 2, Half Potato Pie, and Kartoffel. This is a remake of the meta filibuster fight, which sees him spawn immediately alongside some condemned pangs. After a bit, Lil Dark will spawn as well as a nerfed Rajakong. These Pangs and Rajakongs act as the main supporting peon enemies in this stage. As time goes on, the next main supporting bosses include two buffed Dogumarus, a Rang Master, and other Red Malice. The name comes from the stage being a gauntlet of enemies that you fight in the stars, which is where you fight the original meta filibuster. Gauntlet is overall a really solid stage in design and is pretty fun to play. The same positives in the meta filibuster fight can be applied here, just with different enemies. You'll genuinely be able to take on most of these threats with common options as long as you play well. This stage also feels pretty fair and there's not too many inconsistencies or RNG involved. For that reason, I'd call this stage one of the best in the entire event. After that stage is Salty Mole Crew by Lucas IV, Nurse Wufa, Warren S. Caxter the 1337, Anthony 89810, and Wads. You might recognize most of these names as some of the well-known boomer guide makers in the BC community. Wedding Karahime spawns instantly as the boss, while Killer Cat, Boar Jr., Cappy, R. Ost, and Wicked Face spawn in infinite amounts over time as supporting threats. Your goal is to slowly chip down Karahime and eventually kill her. I have absolutely no clue why the stage is named the way it is, and my guess is that it's just some boomer guide maker inside joke. One notable thing about the stage, however, is its similarities to the well-known BCU stage Sweets Parade, which was made by Nurse Wufa. From what I've been told, Wufa also designed the schematics for his group's stage, so the route this stage took makes a lot of sense. Salty Mole Crew is a very interesting and pretty fun stage to play. Chipping down Kirahime over time while defending peons creates usually enjoyable gameplay, and in this case it's balanced to the point where there's a good amount of challenge while also not being insanely difficult. You do have four other stages in this set to play with the same lineup after all. It's just genuinely a very good stage in the event, albeit one that does take some time to beat. Coming up next is Your Refrigerator Invasion by Salted Sweets, Endicilla 10, AZ, Twin Stars, and everyone's favorite Aku Behemoth video guy himself, yours truly. The stage starts off with King Roos for money before it spawns Gigando, Edie, Winged Piggy, and Puffington over time. After a while, Waldo just starts spawning as well. 
The stage is named the way it is because it features two invasion bosses in the form of Gigando and Edie, and two very fat enemies I used for the refrigerator joke being Winged Piggy and Puffington. I later recruited Waldoge to also be the refrigerator itself. Your refrigerator invasion is my own level, so clearly it must be the greatest one in the event. Okay, but in actuality, this stage is rather simple in design and what you have to do. You're meant to stall and fight back at these very threatening enemies until you slowly kill them, then begin chipping away at the invasion bosses. It's pretty simple, but also kind of enjoyable in a way. It's very easy to mess up and die here though, so pay attention to the attack cycles of the main threats. Fun fact, this stage has received the least amount of changes in the entire event after I submitted it, which probably shows how easily understandable and well-balanced it is. Good job, Canjuice. I'll give this stage a pretty fair score, as it's a good stage, but not really anything more than that. And for the final stage in set 3, we have the M Symphony of Fire A Death by Mika, Myopia, Tyrant, Demon Jade, Tajurek, and Alan. This stage came into existence with Mika kidnapping everyone for their enemies and creating her own stage, so she might as well have chosen every single enemy. The stage starts off with St. Dober, Moth, and SBK that you have to rush down fast, with a hacky spawning a bit later. After that, Death Cory and Dianil will spawn alongside another SBK and Moth. If you get the base down to 95% HP, you'll be spammed with SBKs as an anti cheese mechanic, and what you're seeing will become someone's top 10 most hated enemies video. The name for the stage comes from quite a lot of complex elements. M Symphony might be related to Death Quarry, but is actually due to the song itself, Mechanical Rhythms being a metal symphonic song, whereas Fiery comes from both Hacky and Dianil, and Death is, well, just Death, and also from Death Quarry. M Symphony is designed in such a way that it feels like something even Ponos could have made when designing UL stages. It manages to flow very naturally while not being overbearing, and is just a genuinely very enjoyable experience. You move across the field forwards to deal with the first wave, and then slowly return back to your side while fighting the second, and all of the enemies have very nice dynamics with each other. This stage doesn't need any flashy boss or gimmick, it just operates as a very good stage, and personally, my favorite stage in the entire event. We're at the last real set, being set 4. Starting off is Inevitable Demise, with Ignorant Escape, Codename CAT, Ethan's, Savo, Kasparov, and Manic. This stage is pretty much just random enemy spam featuring a Mega Cat, Okame, Omens, and multiple Garden Eel Bros, Mesocosmos Cyclones, Memos, and Crocleys. The name I'm pretty sure is supposed to allude to the player receiving more troublesome enemies over time, but this is not the most concrete. Inevitable Demise is a good example of what you'd expect a stage in this event to be. Random enemy spam without a care in the world for structure. This stage has nothing too special about it besides the high amount of scary enemies. Not the best stage in my books. Following up, we'll take a ride with Anisho and Yonko by Goo Mister and Kobama. This stage has only two enemies, which are Surge Base and Cat Cart P. Multiple Cat Cart P's spawn over time and slowly increase in magnification, while your goal is to rush them down and finish before the stage becomes too strong. Initial Enyanko is named after the anime Initial D, which is a racing anime, hence the cat carts in the stage, and the word Yanko, which is just cat in Japanese. Initial Enyanko is another joke level just like Balls Grinder 9000. At one point the stage actually had five surge bases stacked on top of each other, but that was nerfed for obvious reasons. The theming combined with the minimalistic gameplay truly creates something that is both easily digestible and very memorable. In other words, this stage is peak and clearly deserves the best possible rating alongside Balls Grinder. The next stage is the Faceless Mercenaries by Tusef, Mu, Toxic Spikes, Sean, and Megalex. Every enemy in this stage is traitless with Healer as the boss, supported by a spam of infinite no-nos and five pastry cats, Corys, and Henrys. Yes, that's right. There's five Henrys. And they're also all 200%. The name comes from the fact that every enemy in this stage is traitless. 
which is similar to the word faceless. The faceless mercenaries is just another enemy spam stage. Except this one is basically a hard check for Hitman in your lineup. You are not getting anywhere past this stage without Hitman, especially due to the Corys and Henrys. So I think I'll give this stage a score representative of the amount of brain cells I used to beat it with Hitman. Dying Dwarf Stars comes next, made by creative name, Gummy, The Sus Brown, and Nightmare. This stage has three little erasers as the boss, each with separate base HP waves, with infinite star pangs and zyclones as support. There's also one weirdly buffed 2314% Miku Doge, but I'm not sure why they chose this- oh it is 69420 HP. The stage name comes from the enemies, where Zyclone represents the dying part, Lil Eraser represents the dwarf part, and Star Pang represents the star part. Dying Dwarf Stars is a pretty obnoxious stage to play because of one reason. There's three little erasers, and you fight them individually with absolutely no changes between the fights. This just makes the stage feel longer than it already is. Infinite Zyclones, as well, is something that is just never fun to deal with, as your base will slowly get whittled out if you take too long. At least when I was playing it, it was not a very fun stage at all, so it receives a matching score. And for the final level in the pack made entirely by a group, we have Tanzania Zizania by Kira, Uno, Panzer, Roro, Fabe, Mickey, and Kerry. Formerly known as Tanzania Bonzania, this stage became infamous during the beta of E150 for being a stupidly hard, near impossible stage balanced around level 130 Ubers. In the modded version, though, you'll have a Godzilla slowly chip down your base while you're forced to deal with multiple Bang Bangs, the Boins, Red Energies, Wild Doges, and Aku Doges all with a Hanya sitting at the back. The name comes from a Discord private server called Tanzania, where the members here are from, and the second word is just some random phrase that rhymes with it. Tanzania Zizania is easily the hardest stage in the event, even after being nerfed into the ground. It has everything a hard stage has, an inconsistent start off, lots of opportunities to mess up, a tedious cleanup, and if you take too long your base will just die. I wouldn't call it a boring stage to play, but it isn't the most fun one either. I think that if the theme was absolute chaos, the team did a great job because this is an organized enemy spam stage that I would never want to see in the real game ever. But maybe that just means that this stage is the peak of Battle Cats, and we just don't deserve Tanzania Zizania. Only time will tell. Well. That was just about every stage in the E150, as well as what this event was. Here's the final ranking list based on the scores I gave every stage, and although some are worse or better than others, I would definitely not want any of these stages to not have existed. Every stage here provides something for the event, which all combined together for a very fun experience. As someone who was pretty active during the event taking place, I can say that it was a surefire blast all the way from start to finish. I'm a big fan of when public servers like RBC host very fun community events like this one, and I might make another video whenever an interesting event happens there, be it an E152 or something else entirely. But anyways, that's about it for now, and I hope you all have a good day.